Hello and welcome to La La Land on LA Talk Live. That's Dorothy Dillingham Blue. And there's Brett Chapin, the founder of La La Land. We are celebrating our 100th, 100th episode. episode. Thanks for joining us on La La Land. This yes. is the only nationally broadcast show by Los Angeles artists about Los Angeles artists. Episode 100. Wow. 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 Has this show really been going on 100 weeks? Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't know. I mean, we have so many guests in the studio. I feel like we should almost get straight to it. You know, it's it's nice that it's our 100th episode. But um, yeah, let's get straight to the guests. <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Um, Do we have some LA Minute listings? Yeah, we, we, we have a few. We okay. have, uh, of course, High School Musical Junior. Yes, right? which opens March 1st. Uh, over at Theater Palisades. For tickets, go to theaterpalisades.com or you can call the box office, 310-454-1970. We do. Uh, we also have Cassiopeia at Theater at Boston Court. Mm -hmm. Get your tickets for that at bostoncourt.com. Um, what else do we have? We have Fallen Angels at the Pasadena Playhouse still going on this weekend. That's right. Last weekend, pasadenaplayhouse.org for mm -hmm. information on that. Um, and we have coming up the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee at Theater Palisades. That's right. That opens April 5th. April 5th. Yep. April 5th. Oh, and then we have a little show at a place called the Founders Center called Rents that also opens on April 5th. You may, uh, those of you who attend may, may uh, recognize one of the stellar voices in the show, uh, also known as Brett Chapin. Yes. He will be in the show. I am ensemble and a cop. Go figure. It's like my 19th <laughs> time playing a cop. But... <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, that means you, you, you have an, an air of authority, which is good to have. Yes. I think. It's going to be really fun, too, because they're having a sing-along for one performance. One <gasps> performance is just for kids. Um, really? Yeah, it's going to be I'm really sorry, cool. I'm sorry. Did you say one performance of, of, of Rent is all for kids? It's only for uh, under 18. Yes. Okay. Interesting, huh? Very, yes. I, I, I had a student who, who, once, who came to me once. And he goes, yes, I saw... An adaptation of Rent for Kids. <laughs> Everyone had pneumonia. <laughs> really? <laughs> they do I was like, that? Okay. That's ridiculous. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, go to beyondthestageproductions.com for information on that. It opens April 5th. Um, what else do we have? Well, of course, Von Bach. Von Bach, of course. We'll be talking to the, the creators in just a moment. And then also, if you have any questions for any of our guests today, please make sure you call 323 247 Seven four four three. We're also going to be doing some ticket giveaways. We're, it's just a jam-packed show. We're going to have a great, great time. So I hope everybody's raring and and ready to go. Good stuff. We've yeah. got we've got merchandise to give away to our callers. We've got buttons. We have a limited edition in the Heights CD. Yeah, you turn one hundred, and all of a sudden, like people give you stuff to I give know. away. It's awesome. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. <laughs> I think we have tickets to as the world goes round. And the world. And the Rose Round. That's and what that's what I meant. And, and the, the world, world goes round. <laughs> yes, we do. You're mixing it up with the soap opera, sweetie. I know. It happens <laughs> all the time. Um, for a March 1st performance of uh, And the World Goes Around. Very good. Mm -hmm. Great. Good stuff. Well, let's get started. Let's get started. Yeah. Quick commercial to adjust cameras. And, and sure. We'll, yes. we'll be back in, in about 30 seconds on uh, La La Land today with Brett and Dorothy Dillingham Blue on LA Talk Live. All right. Welcome back to La La Land on LA Talk Live. That's Dorothy Dillingham Blue. And there's Brett Chapin. We uh, have many amazing guests in the studio. And yes. if you have any questions for them today, make sure you give us a call at 323-247-7443. 323-247-7443. And win a prize, too, because we yeah. have merchandise and theater tickets today. Make sure Fun you give times. us a call. Excellent. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, we have the creative team from Von Bach with us today, and uh, we have Scott Ronglian and Owen Hammer. Welcome, welcome, Malcolm. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I go way back with these two guys. We, we are both Northwestern graduates, and I always, have always known that they're, you know, crazy, and, but in the best way, in always in the best way. So when when they're like, come see this show, it's it's like, it's horror, but comedy and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm, sure, yeah. And then I came and I just thoroughly enjoyed myself. So I said, you know, th they're remounting the show. We got to have them back on. We got to have them on the show. So th here you are. So the writer Thank here you. is Owen Thank Hammer. You, yes. That's correct. Yeah. And, and the show is taking place at the Fremont Center Theater, by the way. Mm -hmm. FremontCenterTheater.com for tickets. Yes. They, right. They've bought up all the different spellings. So FremontCenterTheater.com. Mm -hmm. oh, Very nice. nice. Yes. Now tell us, Owen, like how you, how you came with this idea to 
uh, to have von Bach. Sure. Uh, there's a couple uh, things. Uh, the first of which was I had heard about Bela Lugosi Jr., uh, son of uh, the famous uh, Dracula actor Bela Lugosi, mm-hmm. had sued Universal Studios and a company that made a plastic model of Bela Lugosi as Dracula and uh, won the rights to control the image of his father. And it was a, I heard this interview with him on the radio, and it's a complicated story of how fractions of intellectual property are owned by different people. And I thought, what if Dracula showed up and sued everybody? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my my friend Craig, who was who was working with me at this office, and who went on to direct uh, several of the film segments in Von Bach, almost peed in his pants. He thought the idea was so funny. Uh, and as I wrote it, I realized that writing a play about Dracula was doomed to failure. Mm-hmm. So I invented my own completely f- fictional, from the ground up, famous movie monster. The uh, Dr. Von Bach, uh, creator of the galvanizer, which can resurrect uh, the dead. Yes. Uh, and the other thing that uh, inspired it was Industrial Light and Magic uh, had put together a 17-minute work, uh, uh, proof of concept that they could make a CGI Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster for Universal to do a CGI Frankenstein movie. Oh, good lord! And I, I saw it. I probably shouldn't have seen it. I, I work <laughs> in visual effects when I'm not writing plays. And it looked, uh, it looked so much like him. And I was struck by the fact that nobody was struck by the fact that <laughs> here, here you have the story of a, a of a, a dead people, pieces of de- of dead bodies reanimated. And in real life, with our amazing technology, we've reanimated this dead actor <laughs> and brought him back to life. <laughs> And uh, those two things kind of merge to become the story of Von Bach. Ah, all right. Mm. And now, and for those of you who uh, um, who have not seen it yet, they what they you guys do, which I think was really really innovative, was intersperse those film clips from the the past Von Bach movies and adaptations and make them as part of the story of the live theater production, which I thought was really innovative and and really helped those of us in the audience know the story without a lot of boring exposition. <laughs> yeah, it was a neat way for us to actually, um, as you say, tell the backstory right. of Von Bach mm-hmm. without having to sit there and sort of tell you verbally mm-hmm. or even do some silly stagings of scenes from Von Bach movies of your we actually went out and filmed them all. And in the end, after two, pr- two productions worth, we ended up with about 25 <laughs> short films, uh, something like that, with commercials yeah, and things uh, like that. Yeah, it ended up being, uh, well, there's over 100 Von Bach movies within the, sto- within the within fictional the world. universe. Yeah. Oh, God. And we, we, we've produced film segments from about 10 of them, yeah. mm-hmm. as well as some commercials and uh, film clips and interviews and and even a parody of TMZ, which yeah. a lot of reviewers, yeah, that was one of my favorites. Uh, I really yeah, liked that one. That was one of my favorites too. <laughs> the, the problem with that is that nobody wanted to play Harvey Levin. Um, really? Yeah. Keep. You in, think that would be like a great scene chewing uh, kind of fun part? Well, well but... keep in mind, most actors would jump at the chance to play like Hitler or Stalin or Pol Pot mm-hmm. or something. But like <laughs> You're nobody comparing Harvey Levin to Hitler. <laughs> nobody. No, I'm not. It's I'm not. I'm just saying. To play I'm just saying <laughs> is. I was like, will you play Harvey Levin? And actors were like oh i don't think i don't think i can i don't think i can do that and that was really kind of surprising okay yeah good times yeah. i would i would love to play harvey levin i don't well, know where why. were you when i, I know. <laughs> next time next, next time. time okay now you know now, now i know, you know. <laughs> now but, this is what this is the second or third incarnation the third, of the it? third the third incarnation of mm-hmm. it we did a couple of halloweens in a row oh right out in hollywood and uh you know we were talking about doing it in other parts of town because it's so hard for people to get you know to one central location sure. sometimes. so we wanted to try a different location and we approached the fremont center theater and, and they really loved the idea from mm-hmm. the get-go and just thought it was so different and they like sort of experimenting with with you know different types of stuff at their venue and uh, they just really loved the idea. And, I mean, we really sold it just by showing them a film clip and a bunch of these fake posters. <laughs> and they just loved the fact that we created this, you know, totally alternative universe where Von Bach exists. Um, and they wanted to bring – and their theater is actually a converted uh, funeral home. So <laughs> it had this great cachet already built in that, uh, uh, you know, here's our undead monster, you know, living inside of this funeral home, basically. It had a great energy to it. It's a wonderful space. That is awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was perfect. It was per- we didn't even I, have to dress the stage very much. It looks like this wonderful. It's got these arch ceilings and just a, it's a beautiful space. It really is. Oh, I excellent. think I was uh, telling you, Owen, that we were talking to the little, uh, little Candle Theater who is having their show in Fremont Center Theater after you guys. And they had their auditions and all their actors were just so impressed with your, uh, with your set. Yeah, I, 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 well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that they like the set. Curtis Bedford gets the credit for our, our set. Uh, but um, I, I like the story that uh, this, this, this nice little show about a priest. They have to hold the auditions in this mad scientist laboratory. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Father Brown. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, I wish we could have seen that. Yeah, but about a third of about a third of the scenes take place in this mad scientist laboratory, and about a third of the scenes take place in a Hollywood set that's supposed to be a reproduction of it. And, oh, how uh, funny. Yeah. So, uh, well, and it's really, I mean, what's great about it is you get to see both those worlds side by side, uh, where you have really the Hollywood of today creating, you know, yet another version. As Owen said, there's been a hundred versions in our fake world, yet mm-hmm. another ver- version of Von Bach. And then you get these flashbacks to where we actually go back to where the real Von Bach came from, which was this real person back in the 19th century. Who was a doctor, a very you know pioneering doctor, who his machine uh, turned him into a, a, a an a, undead, an undead monster. Yeah, and uh, but, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very common. Yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you know, in the 19th century was very, very you know avant garde in mm. how it dealt with uh, resurrection. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, everybody went after it. Now there are a lot of tones that uh, tonally the the shifts in the show go very broad. And like, how did you wrangle all those together? Because you get you get the script, and you're like, okay, it's in the past, it's in the future, it's in the present, it's in it's in celluloid, it's in all these different things. It was hard because you know. Uh, it, on on a surface, you know, you can kind of look at it and say, well, it's sort of a screwball comedy. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of crazy characters from Hollywood. You know, we have a crazy producer, crazy director, um, a CGI actor. We have a fake Von Bach in front of uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater. We have a, a Elvira type character. So you've got yeah. a lot of these different things on stage. <laughs> but at the heart of it, you really have this honest story about this man who really just wanted to help people and save mm-hmm. lives, and this horrible thing happened to him. And since that happened, all these stories have been told and mistold and 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 re- reinterpreted in the wrong way since then. So it was interesting for us to, to play with it uh, on those levels, because you go from a very funny scene to a very serious scene, but there's still comedy in it. I think of Owen, course. Owen does a great job of, of, even in the serious scenes, peppering in some great subtle comedy. Yeah. And so you kind of always maintain that level of, of levity. Yeah. Uh, but it was always interesting for me when we were shooting the films. When I turned to Owen one day and I'm like, we haven't even rehearsed this show yet. I have no idea whether these films are going <laughs> to fit within the pace of the play. And, and when, yet they do. And they do. And what's great is that it's it sometimes it's almost like a break uh-huh. in the action where you can kind of sit back and watch this other story be told yeah. sort of inside of the story. And, it, and honestly, I think audiences it keeps them on their toes mm-hmm. because they just never know what to expect around every corner. One of the uh, uh, something that emerged through the writing process was that Von Bach, the undead monster, became the straight man. He's 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 a regular kind of ordinary guy, other than this bizarre medical condition right. of his. But, <laughs> but you start to, to realize that he's like somebody who you know you might have like a weird something strange about him, but he's like dealing with it the best he can. But these people in Hollywood, they're the strange ones. Mm-hmm. They're the weird, and he's the normal one. Yeah. And uh, that that kind of that that once and then I just had to fight the urge to give him a funny line uh, as right. I wrote it. It's like, let's have him say that. That'd be funny. It's like, no, he can never. He just has got to be this serious person. And there was a lot of discovery. Like uh, the, the funny things that he did say were not, you know, they weren't jokes. It was discovery of where he happened to be at that moment. Like he's from this this ancient, t- you know, the ni- 19th century. And he happens to have this. To, to be at a loss as to these modern right. things that are happening to him it's and around zo- him. It's a zombie out of water story. Yeah, <laughs> <Really>. there you <laughs> go. No, it is. It's the it's the country bumpkin come to Hollywood, except mm-hmm. the country bumpkin's an undead monster. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was so great doing all these things, the juxtapositions of this guy, you know, playing with an iPhone and yeah. like having yeah. things like that happen to him and you know, in, in a courtroom setting, mm-hmm. you know, where he's suing everybody as as the main theme of the story becomes suing everybody for, um, you know, basically defamation of character and copyright infringement yeah. and all those things. Um, <laughs> and it's just a great, wonderful juxtaposition 
that he gets to play. And it is it is hard. You don't want him to ever smile. You don't want him to ever laugh. Yeah. Because he's just not that kind of guy. Yeah. Guys, we're talking to Owen Hammer and Scott Roglin of Von Bach. Yeah, for tickets to bon, Von Bach, give us a call at 323-247-7443. 323-247-7443. All right. All right. Well, well, now we have a. Did you have a a, a trivia question? Trivia before? question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Free tickets. I got him. Here we All go. right. Who is Bill Lugosi Jr.'s father? All no, right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, here. Uh, here's a good one. In the in the very first uh, ever release of uh, the James Wales Frankenstein movie with Boris Karloff. Okay. How is Boris Karloff credited? Oh. That's a toughie. Yeah. I like it, though. Okay, so 323-247-7443. And I will be looking up the correct answer on Google. <laughs> <laughs> to, make, to make sure. Even know the answer <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm like 99% sure I remember it properly. Okay. All right. Sounds but, good. Uh, the That's answer tough. may surprise you. Ooh. <laughs> see. Fabulous. Yeah. All righty. Sounds good. So if you uh, go see Von Bach, it runs through... March 10th. Great. It's Saturday nights and Sunday afternoons. Uh, Saturdays at 8, Sundays at 3 p.m. All right. FremontCenterTheater.com. Thanks yes. so much for coming on, you guys. Great hey, to see thanks you. Thanks for having us. For having us. All right. Fun. Cool. Good stuff. All right. All right. Thank you. No, please. Thank please you. sit down. <laughs> Everybody. Gosh. <laughs> and we're going to get to some other guests, but you can call in later for your tickets to Von Bach. You can Absolutely. call in at any time. 323-247-7443. Um, what's next? The song? Do next we up, we've got... Song uh, to? Yes, next up, we have mm. uh, a number from High School Musical Junior, so we'll be right back. I'm kind of letting you run the show on the Sunday of the episode. Are you catching that? The, on, <laughs> I, I, I am that? catching it. Are, are yeah. you, it's, it's sort of the rehearsal for when you're out of town. Is that what this is? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> um, we'll be back on La La Land on LA Talk Live. Great. All right, hey, we are back here at La La Land with Brett Chapin and Dorothy Dillingham Blue. That's me. And joining us today, we have Daniela Renzo and Jake Lyon from High School Musical Junior. They play the diabolical twins, Sharpay and Ryan. So take it away, guys. Thank you. <laughs> It's hard to believe that I couldn't see You were always there beside me Thought I was alone with no one to hold But you were always there beside me These feelings like no other I want you to know Nice job, guys. <laughs> nice job. How how old are you two? How, uh, how I'm 11. She's 11. Yes. 11 years old, and they they can do all that. That's awesome. Well. <laughs> all right. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna have a second song from from our other two uh, musical guests a little bit later on. Yep. But right now, let's um, get to Joshua Eli Krantz. All right.
Joshua Eli Krantz of at Oops and, and the world and the world goes around <laughs> playing right now at the NoHo Arts Center. Uh, plays 411com slash world yes. for information on that. And thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here on your hundredth show. Yay. It's good stuff. We've been talking about as the world goes and the world and goes around too. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess we could be a possible soap opera. Every time. You know, it, it, <laughs> We've been it talking. does touch on so many emotional levels. So it does. Yeah. It does. We've been talking about And the World Goes Round mm-hmm. for a while. Um, we have, yeah. Yes, we had Michael Sterling on, mm-hmm. uh, your publicist, mm-hmm. to talk about it. It's yes. an amazing, amazing, excellent show that you have going on. Um, tell us a little bit about it for our audience members who might not know, be familiar with it. Well, And the World Goes Round is a, um, it was a musical that was done back in 1991, and it was originally conceived as a musical review. Um, of the songs of Candor and Ebb. It's kind of a love letter to, to these two composers. And, they, and the music and the lyrics and, and the songs are just so incredible. This whole show is about relationships and the way people... You can always see something in your life, whether past, present, or future, about how you've dealt with a past relationship, pr- pr- uh, present, or future relationship. And... The music is very, very poignant. The lyrics, the lyrics in the show are just stunning. And um, just on a, on a, a secondary note, we I had an opportunity with one of our cast members, Kristen Towers, roles, um, to go on another radio show, and we had a chance to talk to Mr. John Kander himself. Oi! And very that cool. was that was the highlight of my entire life. I have never, you know, I couldn't possibly express to you not only how I felt in terms of, you know, when he came on, but it was, you know, it's like talking to one of the greats. If you talk to Stephen Sondheim or you talk to Jerry Herman or the great Marvin Hamlish, a lot of these people have passed on. And I have to tell you, doing his music every single night with this amazing cast. And I will say this, you know, when I joined working on this production, um, which is we're doing through Be Wild About Music Productions, um, I had never met any of these cast members before. And when you see them perform on stage, it's like they've been performing for years together. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's a really great show. It's, it, it absolutely is. And I mean, it's extremely intimate. We, we perform this show in a 49-seat theater. And yeah, liter- that's, I've heard it's like yeah. intimate. It's very kind intimate. And, and, when, and when you literally, when you walk in, when you walk in there, you're walking in, into the set, which was designed by Tom Giammario, who was just, he just designed this beautiful, beautiful, um, simple, but very elegant set. And you're, you're, it's like you're coming back to a club that, that I used to perform at. And the concept behind the show that was cr- um, created by D- Gary Lee Reed, our wonderful director, um, is that I am this uh, performer that's coming back to this club, and it's the memories that come out of the music and my personal experiences that bring these wonderful other people back to life and they come in through a spinning door like the revolving oh. door of you know and they they come in at the beginning that way and they go out that way at the end and it's a very cool concept it's, it's a very very cool concept and you're the musical director i, I am well uh, i have a couple of things I, I'm, a, I'm a musical director i'm the vocal director i'm the pianist in the show and i'm also the sixth cast member the show has never been done with a musical director in the show personally oh. it's the thespian of all it, trades yes, there you exactly. go exactly and yes. and i and i and on top of everything i get to sit and watch the show every night from where i play mm-hmm. i'm the only person that can actually sit and watch the show all of them you know it's like actors you're not supposed to break the fourth wall ever mm-hmm. well i can see, you know i can see everything they're doing and it's it's every song in this show tells a story how is doing the musical directing for this show different than other shows that you've worked on in the past? Um, I would say for this one in particular, when you're working with when you're working with the type of cast members that we have who make amazing, fantastic acting choices. They're singers, they're dancers, and they're actors. It's, I would say, one of my biggest challenges working on a production like this for me, beside doing the music, was being able to work with people that are so on top of their game. These people, the, the, the cast is so talented. I can't say much more about them, but they are just immensely talented people. And they, and when you have people that pick up music so quickly, pick up choreography, by the way, I have to say, say Noel Britton, our choreographer, has taken this tiny little space 
And if you have not seen this, she creates an entire pot of dew between two actors um, that we do in uh, the second act of the show, which combines the songs of uh, Marry Me and Quiet Thing, which Quiet Thing was John Kander's favorite song from Flora and the Red Menace. Noelle, we'll have a chance to talk to her on the 15th. She's coming oh. in. Oh, she's coming in? Oh, yeah. well, then she'll... Well, that's fantastic. Well, um, she's, she's done everything from, you know, created... Um, this gorgeous dance relationship number to we have people in our show that are on roller skates. And we're awesome. doing this also in a 19 by 24 space. You know, you're going, people are roller skating around. The sp- just everything that she's created and the atmosphere and what we've and what she's done with the choreography is fantastic. And it it works. And it takes you and it, and it, with Gary Lee Reed's direction and my musical direction and Noelle's very wonderful choreography we've been able to just put this beautiful piece of work together i can't say enough about it it's a great show it absolutely is and i and and i encourage any of you to come out and see it i mean it's it's we're running initially through march 10th but we actually have a special announcement which i wanted to announce on your hundredth show today awesome that's great we love special uh, yes we have a special announcement and and um all the cast members, hopefully, are listening. And, uh, of course, uh, Michael Sterling, who set this up for us to be on this show, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, we are going to be extending through the end of March. That's fantastic. Um, so an extra three weeks. An extra three weeks. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the applause. It was very nice. Um, <laughs> the thing is, the uh, and the reviews the reviews for our show have just been phenomenal. Yeah, they're really stellar. I mean, we just had stellar reviews. You guys are at 100% on Bitter Lemons, 100% oh. sweet. We, we got that means fo- you, they've had no negative reviews. We, 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 wow. we, we got five out of five on Broadway World with Don Grigware. I mean, you, you can't, you can't, and... and the the one reviewer that I would say is the toughest person to impress in this entire town. His name is Les Spindle. <laughs> he loved our show, and Les Spindle well actually in his review he actually talked he touched on he's so specific about uh, about the show itself because he's seen it before and he's seen other productions of it that he actually touched even down getting down to the talking about the title of the show because it it's been turned into by MTI the world goes round. We kept put the and back in, and he touched on that in his review. I mean, he's, you know, every character in the show is is also um, defined by by a number: mm-hmm. man one, man two, man three, woman one, woman two, and three. And and so he's very very specific about it. And when you get reviewers who come and see a show that has a tried and true following in terms of the way it was created, that that says a lot. And he's and he's he's very very hard to impress. He's like the Ben Brantley of Los Angeles, basically. <laughs> you know, it was it was impressive to see Les there. I could, I oh, could definitely yeah. tell that it was something to be taken seriously. And, you know, when and I saw Les there. And I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. and Brent, you know, I, and Brett, you know, we're, we're we're in a very small little space in in in, mm-hmm. in NoHo, and you know, there's we're in we're we're in the heart of theater row. And, you know, there's so many choices and so many shows you could come and see. And the the follow the following of the people that have come to see it. I've had composers come up and talk to me. I've had, you know, theater professionals. A lot of people that are in this business, and they they're just blown away by what this product and what we've created because it's it's totally beautiful. I mean, I can't I can't describe it in any other way, but just beautiful. And for those that are are not familiar with the 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 grounds of uh, North Hollywood when they're coming to see your show. What, mm-hmm. what are, you know, is there, well, there, well we're, we're right in the, the heart of the NoHo arts district. So the thing is there is a lot of restaurants around there. Mm-hmm. I will say the parking is a little bit complicated. Okay. So definitely get there early if you're going to uh, come and see the show because parking can be a little bit tricky. And that's good. And may, maybe if they're, uh, you know, yeah. at a restaurant, maybe they mm-hmm. can park their car there and walk over or something. You know, that's yeah. always an option. And absolutely. And, and and I would say the last thing about the production, if you don't know anything about Candor and Ebb besides Cabaret in Chicago, come and see this show just to hear the little jewels and songs that they've written from shows that nobody knows, like 70 Girl 70, The Rink, um, Floor and the Red Menace. And that's just... A beginning of and those are the sh- those are the songs in the show that I love to play the most because they, those are often my favorite songs oh, to hear yeah. at auditions or in cabarets oh, or anything yeah. you know those those things you know you can hear all the other uh, you know standards they're called standards for a reason but I mm-hmm. love to hear those like you said those hidden gems oh yeah and and the cast they sing them they sing them just in such a beautiful way mm-hmm. wonderful 
Well, congratulations so, on an congratulations. extension. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. on your We're wonderful reviews. Thank you very much. And if I, I'd like to give a shout out to our to our cast and our sure, our yes, absolutely. Um, um, the cast is Erica Harahan Ball, Isaac James, Emily King Brown, Ryan Rouge, and Kristen Towers Rolls. And um, I'd also like to thank our fabulous uh, lighting designer Matthew Richter, our costume designer who just makes them look so fantastic, Daniel Mahler. Our stage manager, Carol Ursetti, um, our producer, along with Be Wild About Music Productions, Raquel Lerman and Theater Planners. And, uh, and of course, I wouldn't be here without the ever amazing Michael Sterling. So, and you guys are giving away tickets to your yes, March we are, performance we're, we're, yes, as well. We, yes, we're going to give tickets away. And, and I, I thought it would be fun to have a little contest. And um, the way to do it, I was thinking, either... Have somebody call in if you'd like to call in and uh, name a show that is not one of their more well-known two shows, Cabaret or Chicago, or call in and hum or sing a couple lyrics from something of Candor and Ibs. Ah. But let's mm-hmm. be honest. If you just call in and you can't do either, and one you can't of those do either things, one of them, you know, we'll, you probably, give, we'll, we'll probably give the tickets too, because you know, I would love everybody to come out and see this. Three two three two four seven seven four four three three two three two four seven seven four four three. Call for your tickets to, and the world goes round. Thank you very much. All Thanks, right. Joshua. Thank you. We'll take a quick break and have our next performance. Does sound sound good? Sure. Some more live music. Some more live singing from the uh, kids of TP Youth on La La Land with Brett and Dorothy on LA Talk Live. with La La Land here with Brett Chapin and Dorothy Dillingham Blue and we have two more performers from High School Musical Junior. We are opening March 1st at Theater Palisades, theaterspalisades.com for tickets. We have Natalie Turgeman and Trey White who are Gabriella and Troy. Take it away. Oh 
Well done, guys. Well done. Thank you. Are you interested in auditioning for our show, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> and just kidding. And how old are you two? I'm 13. And I'm 12. Man. I, know, I could right? not do that when I was 12 or 13. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Awesome. We'll, we'll right. have them chat with yeah. us in just a sec. Does that sound fun? Yeah, yeah. We'll take a quick break. All right. And uh, be back on La La Land. If you have any questions for any of our guests, give us a call at 323 247 7443. Three two three two four seven seven four four three. La La Land. Brett and Dorothy. L A Talk Live. Yeah. yeah. We found our cast for Von Bach Jr. Von Bach Jr. Uh, Von Bach Jr. Welcome back to La La Land on LA Talk Live. That's Dorothy Dillingham Blue. I'm Brett Chapin, and we have a caller on the line who's about to win some theater tickets or some merchandise. Is he is he still here? Okay. One, two, three. Hello, caller. <laughs> Hang on one second, caller. Alrighty. Oh, oh there, there he are. is. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Steve. I'm calling from San Francisco. Hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. So, How are you? Great, We're thanks. Good, thanks. Were good. you calling for uh, tickets to Von Bach or As the World Go- and the World Goes Round? <laughs> I, I have a question for the kids. Awesome. Even better. Great. Ask okay. away. Um, I wonder how they feel when, when they're coming out. Oops. There's a little bit of static here. Oh, just turn your turn your uh, the sound down on your computer, and that that'll help you. Okay, we'll turn the sound down. Give okay. one second. 
I'd like to know how the kids feel when they come out on center stage either um, doing a solo or a duet, and they look out over the audience and see 500 eyes looking at them? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Any one of you. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, well, I really feel like I just take everything out of my brain, focus on the task at hand, and I really like uh, what I do on stage because it, it's really fun. <laughs> um, it's kind of... Oh, oh. That's, a, that's another call. We're getting all, right. all kinds of calls. Yeah, now. we're getting calls. Oh. Go ahead. Um, it's kind of like an extra momentum for me because just knowing that all those people came to see me sing and dance and do whatever, it's kind of just like an extra push to make me do better on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knowing that, all <laughs> knowing that all those people came there, it's pretty awesome, and I just block them all out and just pretend it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> um, when I see everyone, I'm, I'm really scared. I mean, everyone's came to see you, and you feel like you have to do good. But, I mean, they don't know the script, so. That's what I always tell them. Like, don't worry. They don't have the script in their lap. They don't know <laughs> how it is. So, you really just want to try your best, and, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I tell them what's unique about the Theater Palisades Youth Program is they're, when they're in a school play or, or some other programs, a lot of times um, there'll be a director in the in the front row who's who is there with, you know, a stick kind of pointing to the to each actor and saying, you know, it's time and everything. But um, but they are on their own. You know, I, I, I call it like the where's Waldo of, door, you know, of directors. <laughs> you don't know where I am. I mean, yeah. a lot of them, they, they've never seen me backstage during a show because I, I that's they have to learn how to do it. I think we have a caller. Let's let's answer that call. Yeah. And Steve, if you uh, send us your email to lalalandtalk at gmail.com, we'll get you some uh, nice merchandise. OK. All right. Okay. Thanks All for right, calling. Very good. OK. Next caller. Hi. Hi, I'm calling. I have a question for the Zach Efron character. Yes. Uh huh. I'm just wondering, where does he get his inspiration? Well, I have to say, I get my inspiration from my aunt Kelly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Tell more about that. Well, she's always been loving to me, and she's very nice. <laughs> now, did she encourage you to sing? She did. Okay. Thank you very much. I feel like that caller's name might be Callie. I don't know. It might, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling. Oh, truth and journalism. Okay, do, so... Um, do we have any other calls right now? Okay. 323-247-7443. Uh, 323-247-7443 to talk to the amazing kids of High School Musical Junior playing at Theater Palisades, theaterpalisades.com, March 1st through March 10th. Yes. Now, we also wanted to kind of, because uh, we have people call in to the show every once in a while, like, what, you know, I want my kid to start it at, you know, a uh, top level every time, all this kind of thing. And I wanted to talk to Natalie about when she started with TPY, she was literally, the, the character was a shadow. Like, literally, that was one of the characters she was playing. So she was kind of, you know, in, in the back, making the environment sort of thing. And <laughs> As she's gone through the program, she's done larger and larger roles. So how did, did you think starting where you did has helped you where you are now? Um, yeah, I definitely think starting where I did because um, when obviously when you get a smaller part, um, it kind of hurts a little bit. But then afterwards, like now that I'm here, like playing like Gabrielle in High School Musical, you kind of like know like that you've learned what you learned and you know how to like, just, like act a little bit better. Because when you're in the background, you need to make yourself pop out a little bit more so people can like really look at you more than like the main character or something. But <laughs> even in plays where I was just like a shadow or something, everyone like not everyone, but a lot of people walk up to me that you did a great job. I'm just like, thank you. I worked really hard on being a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Commitment. And, and we've got another caller. Caller, how how are you? Oh wait, do we? Yeah. Okay. Are you there? Hello caller. Okay. Hello uh, caller, are you, are you listening? Oh, yes, uh, I found you guys on Radio Flag, stimulating conversation. I just had a question for the kid. Uh -huh. uh, I'm kind of losing reception, but uh, have they dealt with any bullying in their school due to them being in theater? Um, and I'll take my answer off the question. So off the air, thanks. Okay. Well, honestly, my school is a non-bully school, 
some people have been like, oh, cool, they've been on board, and some people have been like, oh, I don't do that, but they're never really mean to me. Okay, anybody else? Um, I mean, no one's, like, mean to you. They're just like, ooh, you're doing a high school music play that's so baby. Yeah. But then I was like, <laughs> well, it's awesome, too. Baby, and it's about high school. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I have a question. You said you have a non-bully school. Does that mean your school frowns upon bullies, or you just don't have a lot of guys that are like that? Uh, well, definitely uh, it's a harder school to get into because there are no bullies. Like, if people are mean to you, uh, it will not be tolerated. Like, Boy, I wish I'd gone yeah. to school where you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. Um, for At my school... We have, like, yeah, just like uh, Danielle said, they say, you know, it's not the, you, what, the high school musical. It's really bad play. Why are you in it? And then <laughs> I say to myself, well, how, how about you try it? It's, it's actually really, really fun Yeah, to be in it. Well, me being in eighth grade, um, me and my friend, who's also in the play, we're, like, the oldest people in the cast. So we're almost going to high school. So when we were auditioning for high school musical we're kind of like oh we're gonna be in high school musical fun like this came out when you're like nine but now it's kind of like a lot of my friends are coming they're like oh my god you're gabriella oh my god that's so cool because yeah it's just like you kind of have to go through it like you have people that don't like agree with what you agree with and you kind of just have to like roll through the punches and i mean it's fun when you're on stage so it's fun when you're on stage mm -hmm. so cool is, is gabriella the vanessa hudgens part or? yes that is correct awesome mm -hmm. That is true. And it's it's a lot. Of, and it was I'm usually do uh, those of you who have come come to the shows before know that, you know, it's unusual that I have uh, humans. humans on <laughs> in a show. I do a lot of animals? shows that involve aliens or animals or yes. all that yeah. kind of thing. Mondar. And, oh, wait, we have another call. Oh, we do. OK, yes. great. Yeah. Hi, all caller. Kind of Mondar. Oh, wait, we have a call. Uh, oh, turn your there. radio down, please. Hello. Hi. Hi. OK, hi. Um, I grew up watching High School Musical, and I was just wondering for Daniela how she channeled Shelpay, or like, did she watch herself in the mirror, or how did she do that? Because well, she looks just like her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I came home every day, and I watched it, and I've always wanted to be Sharpay, and my sister's always been like, you're not Sharpay, don't be mean, and now I finally <laughs> get to be Sharpay. <laughs> and Self. I've never been a mean character, so it's kind of fun to be the mean character, and I relate to her because the good aspects of her, <laughs> she likes to be on stage, and I love to be on stage, and she's very competitive, and so am I, so yeah. Yeah, and that's one thing, you know, they know is that, you know, to play the main characters, you have to pretty much be the nicest person in the cast. Yes. Other, otherwise, it's a very miserable, uh, <laughs> very miserable process for everyone involved. And, yeah. and to know Danielle is to know she is one of the sweetest people ever. So <laughs> I'm like, well, this is easy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go it ahead. It looks like it's working out for you. So keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So anything else that you guys, what's been surprising during the rehearsal process? Anybody? Well, um, how fast we've been going. We're already like, yeah. even though tomorrow's, or not tomorrow, but next week is like our last week of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Even on like the third or fourth rehearsal, we are already almost like halfway into the show. And it's just crazy thinking about it. Like this experience has gone by so fast, especially with me being like, the summer going into sixth grade was my first play, and mm -hmm. I've pretty much done every single play, school, like during school and during summer. And it's crazy just how fast the experience goes yeah. by, and it's going to be something that stays with us for like all our life. So. Yeah. yeah. I'll bet. That's what I tell them. Like, it, you know, know these friends, keep in touch with them because yeah. you never know when you will need to reconnect with them and, and have experiences to share. And it's, it's a team. It really is. I try to keep a team aspect mm -hmm. to it. And it's, it, it used to be that I didn't really know how to relate that. But then when I get, um, you know, boys like Jake and Trey who also are, are involved in sports and I'm like, okay, let me try to translate this with a, a sports analogy per se. Mm -hmm. And I've really enjoyed that energy coming in that team aspect. That's a good question actually, guys. Cause I, I did sports and theater in school. How do how do you balance all that? Well, is it tough? Like I have, uh, everyday schedule. <laughs> uh, every single day of the week, I have. Well, first comes soccer, then comes acting, and then it's all, like all like that. And um, it, it I fit it all in my schedule. If it fits in really good, and yeah. Nice. Cool. You just do it, huh? Yep. Awesome. 
Uh, we have one more caller. Hello, caller. Oh, hello. My question is for the cast of High School Musical. Mm -hmm. And my nice. question was, did they watch the show before they before they decided to try out for the roles? Were they fans of the show? Yeah, yeah. I watched it when I was young, and I really, really liked it. And, yeah, that's why I did it now. <laughs> Yeah, when my dad told me that it was High School Musical, I was jumping all around the house and <laughs> screaming, like, what's am I going to do? What song am I going to do? And I've always wanted to be Sharpay, and so this is, like, a dream come true. <laughs> well, awesome. um, obviously, like, um, when I was, like, nine or eight or something like that, High School Musical did come out, and it was, like, the big movie of the, like, mm -hmm. moment. Like, everyone was watching High School Musical, and obviously when I found out that it was High School Musical, I was watching it, and I'm like, okay, how can I act like that character like how can I be a lot like her but still make it my own and mm -hmm. it kind of just it's really fun because I know high school musical like <laughs> I know high school musical so like I can like relate to the play a little bit more because I know like when people are like oh did this happen I'm like yeah that happened in like third scene or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like when I was younger uh, I remember when the play come out play came out and everyone like loved it they watched it 20 times in one day <laughs> <laughs> and they would like act out scenes and I would actually act out scenes around my house jumping around and to actually do it I was like yes <laughs> I knew that I could do it so that's how and what's different with having a show that was initially a film is, and is now a, a stage musical is that you do have to tweak their uh, their performances, their acting, because you, the subtle things don't read as well on stage. So we've had to uh, talk about how to take that moment that's close and quiet and turn it out so that yeah. the audience yeah, can appreciate definitely. it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've done it. They've done it <laughs> brilliantly. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All thank right. you for Thanks calling. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Hey, real quick before we we gotta go, what's what's your favorite thing about working with with Dorothy over there, guys? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> well, she is for, no new new. <laughs> well, first of all, she's kind of crazy. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing about working with her too. And go she's ahead. she's like, I don't know. She's so funny, and she's <laughs> she's like a second mom when we're doing a play because we're oh. with her all the time. So. <laughs> Well, she always gives me a, a, a lot of good pointers on what I should do and what not. And when I'm like here and doing something wrong, and she says, "Oh, how about you go here? It feels a lot better." <laughs> <laughs> and I love it a lot. Well, um, pretty much the theater palisades, the actual place, and Dottie are pretty much my second home and my second mom because I've known both. I've known the place and Dottie for like ever, and <laughs> I can like go there when I'm upset like even for like random things and I can go to Dottie when I'm upset just like to talk about my stuff because she understands so it's really fun to work with someone like that yeah yeah it's great she's not like one of those people who are like oh why can't you get this it's so easy she'll be like okay not exactly <laughs> let's try it again <laughs> she's really fun to be with and she has a bunch of energy that conspires into the play and it's really yeah. great Aw, thanks, guys. Very nice. <laughs> High School Musical Junior playing March 1st through March 10th, theaterpalisades.com for any information about that. This is, say your names one more time. Daniela Renzo. Trey White. Natalie Turgeman. Jake Lyon. From High School Musical Junior. All right. Great job, you guys. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're about to go into episode 101 next week. Jeez Ooh. Louise. Good stuff. Who we got? We have um, theater publicist David Elzer. Mm -hmm. We have uh, box office manager and playwright Diane Grant. Yep. And we have actors Katie Galuska and Zachary Koffer from Legally Blonde at the uh, Simi Valley Performing Arts Center. Excellent. Sounds like a fun time. I'm excited. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yay, we made it! We made it! Episodes. Oh Woo! my gosh. I quit. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for any information on us, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash lalalandtalk, Twitter, twitter.com slash lalalandtalk. Send us an email at lalalandtalk at gmail.com. And for all of us here at La La Land Talk, that's Dorothy Dillingham Blue. And, and there's Brett Chapin. And uh, we will see you next time on La La Land on LA Talk Live. We'll see you at the top. <laughs>